Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on my video. This is everything you ever wanted to know about the Canon EF16 35 l f2.8 Mark II on the Fuji X-T4. Lots of videos, lots of photo samples. All of the video samples are handheld with IBIS. The 16 35 doesn't have OIS. I did not use digital image stabilization and I did not use the boost mode. I uh, did several autofocus tests, so let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm trying out the continuous autofocus, the face eye detect. So I am just doing a little walking around. I have the IBIS on, but I do not have on the uh, digital image stabilization, just the IBIS. There's always a square on one of my eyes. I didn't pick right eye or left eye, I just picked either. And it tracks on my eyes and it seems like every once in a while when it loses an eye, I get a green box around my face. The X-T4 has face auto detect and eye auto detect and you can pick right eye or left eye or auto and it just bounces from eye to eye. The IBIS seems to work well here and my face stays in focus for the most part uh, throughout this vlog test. Um, and that was regardless of whether I was facing the sun or walking away from the sun, whether the background was well lit or dark. But this camera's getting heavy. This lens is heavy. So for a vlogging lens, I don't know. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know I have a lot of lake pictures. I live close to a lake and this canal is in my backyard. So that's why I always take so many pictures of the water. The autofocus with this lens on the X-T4 for photography worked great. Uh, I, about half the time I used autofocus, either spot or zone, and the other half the time I switched to manual focus. It just depended on how I felt. The 16 to 35 is a sharp lens, and the X-T4 has enough pixels that you can punch in and post if you want to. Uh, these wide shots are great and uh, you can crop them down and then you can punch in on them and uh, pan them as if they're video shots like what I'm doing right here. Uh, same image, just zoomed in and then panning. The colors on this camera were great, um, really good. And I shot everything in RAW, edited everything in Capture One Express. Uh, some of the photos I tweaked a little bit. Uh, I used a few effects from DaVinci Resolve uh, for the fun of it on some of the photos after I moved them over to the video editor. And I also used a lot of Capture One's uh, film look effects and film grain. This ladder right here reminded me of when I was a kid and used to swim in lakes a lot. And I took several pictures of it and played around with the editing effects in Capture One to kind of create a feel. And this image I didn't like what I thought after this edit, I was like, you know, this could be like a movie shot or something. Coming to theaters this July. Okay, so this is the auto tracking test, test one. Uh, tracking speed is at plus two, and autofocus speed is at zero. Right now, I'm probably about 12 feet away from the camera. It's at 16 millimeters, so it probably looks like I'm pretty far. I'm gonna walk up to the camera and I can't tell if it's got my face or not. Now, now it just picked my face up. The face eye autofocus was just tricky. Uh, the zone focus in the video was fine, but the face eye, I just don't know. It, it was like the camera was trying too hard. Uh, my face was always in focus and that's good, but the hunting or the breathing that showed up, you could see it here with these arrows pointing to the corners. Uh, it showed up in all of my tests, no matter what settings I had. And it could be the Fuji camera, it could be the Canon lens, it could be the Fringer adapter, it could be a combination of the three on the Fuji, I, I don't know. Uh, and it, it also could be me. Uh, I've only had this camera for a few weeks now and I'm still learning all about its functions. Uh, but I was almost always in focus and it shows up in the vlog test as well, but because I was moving in the vlog test, the, it wasn't as noticeable. Now I did find a workaround for this and you'll see it in a later test, but I, it, it was just strange because my face 
was always in focus and almost all of the time the box on the face detect or the boxes on my eyes were always on my face for most of the time also but this focus breathing I don't know I got my first camera when I was 11 12 it was a Canon T50 with the FD 50 millimeter f1.8 and I carried that camera around with me probably for 10 or 11 years and uh, got into the habit of just taking random pictures of things now back in the day you had to take your images to the store and have them developed but it's even more fun now because you can take pictures of things and then you can do whatever you want to do with them and post I just wanted to show you the detail with that zoom that probably zoomed into like 200% on that needle and this is one of my favorite things about this lens is you can get close you can get wide uh, it works really well on the X-T4 now all of my video clips the F-Log clips uh, I use the color transform space that's usually like my next to last node and then I go back and adjust all of my light and contrast and saturations in the log file um, to get my color transform looking right and sometimes I'll throw on an eternal LUT on the back end and reduce it down to like 20% and um, but back to the pictures, uh, you know, I, it's just something that I've been doing for a really long time and I've recently gotten back into and all of this uh, newfangled technology, all this editing software, uh, the things that you can do now that you couldn't do then, or at least you couldn't do easily. Um, I love it. Okay, I am back. Now I have adjusted everything, uh, or at least I've adjusted my autofocus. Autofocus should be faster and the lock-on should be uh, not so locked on now, so we'll see if this has any effect on it. But one thing I can tell you just from looking right now, everything looks, I can see the box on my eye. No matter which direction I turn, if I walk into the sun, the box is on my eye. If I turn around and I have the bright sun in the background, like now, the box is staying on my eye, even though I'm kind of silhouetted and a lot darker now. But and it bounces back and forth from eye to eye. So the ibis is working fine. I'm in focus, but we still have this focus breathing or focus hunting going on. And like I said, I've got to work around for that uh, later in the video. And again, this camera is so freaking heavy with this lens. This is not... A good vlogging setup the 16 to 35 it gets heavy fast um, and it's heavy so this camera is great this lens is great the fringer adapter works well with this lens on the camera I was able to take a lot of pictures uh, and I liked a lot of them I liked the colors uh, coming out I didn't have to do a lot of color work on them so I really just got to have fun with uh, cropping and getting my compositions where I wanted them and then playing with the look effects. But um, it, I, I, overall, it's a really good combination. Here's an image that I didn't like very much, but I was able to crop in and do a lot of color work on it. Um, and I got two images out of it that I really liked. So now let's look at some more of this autofocus. I believe that I'm in focus and I think this is it right here I see a little red on my hair so this is just manual focus this is another way make a mark on the ground and then I can walk into it I can be out of focus and walk into it and stop so let's try yeah yeah the money's in the drop box yes I want him dead by 7 p.m. Now we are in autofocus, in zone autofocus, and I have an idea of where the box is so that I can walk into it. And I should be able to walk in. I am in the box now. My face is in the box now. You should be able to see me very clearly. And now I'm going to walk and I'm going to kind of duck a little bit so that I stay in the box. I guess I'm assuming that I'm still in focus because I'm in the zone, right? And get really close 
and look right into the camera. So the manual focus of course worked fine if you're going to walk into a place and stand there. But the zone auto was good especially if you're a one man band and you want to move around in your shot. You can also move your zone to different areas in this shot so if you want to stand to the left or right of the shot you can. This zone autofocus also worked really well with handheld shots uh, moving around. The focus box was always in the middle of the shot and it you know it seemed to get focused fairly quickly and kept in focus. I wasn't getting that focus breathing. Uh, it seems like it's that face and eye auto stuff is where you get all that all that crazy stuff with the focus breathing. Um, it, the autofocus on this camera is really good except for that. Here is just where I'm zooming in with the lens and it's staying in focus also. We're going to start with the grill scraper and then I'm going to touch to the pine cone right behind it. And then there's another pine cone behind that one a little further up. Let me see if I can get it. Nope. We go to the building in the back. So there's that. There's that. There's the frog in the background. Now let me get over to the grass on the far side if I can. I think that I did. Okay, so I have another round of photographs. I went to a cow pasture near my house and took some images, you know, of hay and fences and a few flowers and things like that. Uh, and I, I really, um, I liked these images. There were a lot of images that I took here that I didn't like, uh, but I did like some of them. And actually, I think my favorite image out of this batch uh, came. I really like this image with the telephone wires and the barbed wire coming out of opposite corners of the image. And the sun was rising. The cows were not there, and I really wanted the cows to be there, and they just weren't there that morning. And uh, but I did get several good images. I got to play around with the look and film lots. So I was able to get some good pictures there. When I was leaving, I got this shot. And this was hands down my favorite shot. It's close and it's wide at the same time. And it's one of the great things you can do with this lens. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up uh, with some random clips. Uh, just to kind of give you some ideas, all of these were just graded out with the Fuji LUTs, most of them um, with the Eterna or the 709. Um, but the 16 to 35 L with the Fuji XT4, it's a great combination. If you have the 16 to 35 and maybe a, a lot of other EF lenses, and you're wondering if maybe you should go and get a Fuji camera, I don't, I don't think that you can go wrong doing that. And if you have a Fuji camera and you're thinking about getting some EF class for it, I don't think you can go wrong with that either. Uh, they work really well together, especially with the Fringer adapter. And, you know, other than that uh, face and eye autofocus issue, um, I didn't have any issues uh, trying to use this lens on the Fuji camera. The autofocus worked well on everything else. Um, worked well in video it worked really well in photo I was able to take a, a lot of good pictures with this uh, some decent handheld video I didn't use my gimbal or you know try to make any short films or any cinematic type of stuff I was just getting shots while I was taking photographs and um, I I think it's uh you know if, if this is something that you're thinking about then uh, definitely give it a try or maybe try out some less expensive EF class first and see if you like it and then maybe uh, get yourself one of these 16 to 35 lenses anyway uh, thanks for watching please hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time